Okay, got my little thing up here again. We're going to talk about Glide. Okay, when you have a blended refrigerant, you are going to have Glide. Because you got, let's say, two different refrigerants, sometimes three, four, five, six, whatever, I don't know. I, most of them I've seen are like two, but uh, I guess there are some others. Let's say I have one refrigerant that at 70 degrees, uh, the saturated temperature pressure at 70 degrees is 121. Okay? And I have another refrigerant that has a saturated temp pressure 70 degrees of 70 degrees. So, that's 51 degrees temperature glide. When that refrigerant goes into say an evaporator, the liquid, when it's, the liquid is there, it's all mixed up. It's not separated at all. As soon as that uh, refrigerant starts to boil in the evaporator, it's going to boil off the high pressure stuff first. So, as that pressure lowers in the evaporator after the expansion device, the one with the higher pressure is going to evaporate first, and one with the lower pressure is going to evaporate second. So the first part of that evaporator is going to be boiling at a certain temperature. That temperature stays the same throughout the evaporator if it's a single fluid refrigerant. Once the refrigerant starts to boil, then it'll stay the same temperature until all the refrigerant is boiled off and then it superheats. Okay, that would be represented by this. This is your TXV and this is temperature here. Okay, it's going to immediately drop down, take the sensible heat out of the refrigerant, and then it's going to work with that saturated temperature pressure until we reach the point where there is no more uh, liquid left in the line and you start superheating, that's going up. That's a single fluid. Now, if it's a, if it's a blend, it's going to have a glide. All that really means is the highest pressure gas that's in it, the, the component of the refrigerant that is the highest pressure is going to boil off first and boils off at a lower temperature. So as it starts moving through the evap, it's going to start changing the composition of the refrigerant. So let's say it was 50-50 to start with, and the high pressure refrigerant started boiling off, pretty soon it's going to be 25-75. Well as it does that, the, as it changes the makeup, the temperature increases to correspond with the boiling point of the lower pressure refrigerant. Okay? So you don't have a specific saturated temperature pressure throughout the evaporator. Once you get to the the point where there's none of either one of them left, then the superheat comes on. But during this this time here, the composition is changing and so the temperature of the evaporator is changing throughout the whole thing. So you will have an average, if you went somewhere in the middle here, you'd have an average temperature. But if you went on at the uh, beginning of the evaporator, you would have a lower temperature that you read if you read it with a thermometer than you would just before it goes to superheat. So it's a little bit different there. Now that's going to make a difference in superheat calculations too. And I'm going to do another one on that because it's a uh, it's a little more complex, but the, you can do superheat and subcool calculations with blends. Anyway, this is how the blend works in evap. Condensing in the condenser really actuates the same way. The one that can be uh, turned into a liquid first 
will condense and then the other one condenses as it goes through the condenser and then it goes into subcool. So we'll talk about that one next time I do one on these uh, blends.